All right, welcome back. If you're just joining us, it's Daybreak on Trust Television, and we will be discussing the Naira this morning, the tumbling and whatever you call it. Currency, it's a medium of exchange for goods and services, and this explains why commercial banks and the rude exchange are in talks on strategic steps to boost dollar liquidity and save the sliding Naira. The alliance being understudied by the Central Bank of Nigeria will require banks to sell proceeds of international money transfers to be rude exchange at the investors and experts window wreath. The Bureau de Change operators will in turn sell the foreign currency to retail end users. The Bureau de Change operators had recently advised the Central Bank of Nigeria to revisit its 2016 model, which permitted banks to sell dollars to Bureau de Change. Uh, this idea was brought by the CBN. The Bankers Bank last weekend issued a circular to BDCs uh, signed by the Director of Trade and Exchange Department. OS Energy tied to the operational mechanism for the real exchange operations in Nigeria. With this development, the daybreak, daybreak, I beg your pardon, this morning we'll be discussing the possible ways uh, that the real exchange can boost dollar liquidity in Nigeria. And to do justice to this topic this morning, we have Idris Mohamed Abdullahi. Idris is a financial expert on corporate governance, anti corruption, tax fraud, and asset recovery. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Thank you. Uh, we also have joining us via Zoom, Steve Mwachuku, economist, financial expert. Gentlemen, you are both welcome to today's um, occasion. Good morning, Mr. Steve. Um, it's been a while. It's good to see your face again. All right, we have a bit of challenge here, Mr. Steve. I'm sure we'll resolve that before we get to him. Um, it's a pleasure to have you join us this morning. Since uh, the comment about the president to unify the Naira, we have seen quite a number of events. Uh, first of all, uh, following the announcements, the anticipation in the market, we saw people moving to hedge, and thereafter the CBN came with a policy which almost uh, brought the market in alignment. But thereafter, uh, we started seeing shortage on the official window, and now the margins between the official window and the parallel market has shot over 150 naira uh, since that incident. And we have been battling on keeping the parallel market from hitting the 1,000 the 1, mark as, as the case may be. What exactly do you think um, is happening in that sector? Um, in my own thoughts, we seem to focus on our place more emphasis on the BDCs rather than uh, working on policies that will ensure that uh, even the effects that the BDC have on the Fox market uh, is, is, is um, way, which way lesser. Uh, uh, for example, um, when the acting CBN governor took over, uh, there are some deliberate uh, steps I expected the uh, acting CBN uh, governor to take because uh, currently Nigeria is on the grey list of uh, FATF, uh, and then uh, if we don't get out of that grey list, um, there will be sanctions. Explain the grey list, please, so we uh, understand. Uh, the grey list is uh, a list of uh, uh, company, uh, um, countries with uh, less compliance in terms of what um, the FATF standards are, and then uh, if they are, they are um, laws that are meant to be put in place to ensure compliance with um, um, FATF uh, recommendations and, 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 and standards. Now, if any country does not meet um, those um, requirements, you are relegated to the grey list, uh, you're being forced to come up with uh, remedies to ensure that those, pol um, those uh, policies or laws that is expected of each country is put in place to enable trade and... Um, you talk about um, coming up with policies that would make the effect, if you like, or impact of the parallel market lesser. Yes. The CBN has always argued that um, the parallel market controls less than 20% of the forest market. But why is it so significant in determining price? if the volume it controls there is far less than the volumes we see in the official market? Um, just like I said, um, um, if we put proper policies in place, this will curb the effects 
of of uh, the, what you know. Right now, um, I think the regulatory agencies need to step up their games and come up with strategies to effectively reg regulate that sector. Because uh, over time, what the CBN fears is that um, the KYCs are not being implemented efficiently, and this has resulted into abuse. And um, that sector is seen as uh, one of the sectors that enables IFF, illicit financial flows out of the country, enables uh, money laundry, and, and, and so, so on and so forth. And this, uh, in multiplier effect, results into capital flights, and it put more pressure on uh, Forex demand for the country. Right. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's bring in Mr. Steve Wachko. I hope the connection is a lot, more, is a lot better now. Um, I wonder what you make of uh, the situation with uh, the Naras free fall and how these policy somersaults continue to uh, concern investors and also negatively affect uh, our economic performance. What is your take on what's going on with uh, our foreign exchange, for instance? I guess you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you, so go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so there are a couple of issues and there are a couple of other uh, counter issues or policies that have not gone well with this very regime of unification or what you may call harmonization, uh, flotation, or whatever you call it. Uh, it seems like uh, the the government failed to understudy the issues uh, which has to do with the supply end of the forest and they focus more on the checks uh, to unify or to bring the parallel market and the official uh, exchange rates together. And this has resulted in most of these very issues that we are having now. And what are these challenges? So what challenges is just the source, the source of supply, the source of inflow of forest to our market. And that has been having challenges, issues around production of crude oil, which is the main source of our forest. Then other issues around foreign remittances and non-oil export proceeds are also been uh, an issue also that we we'll continue to have on the supply to the forest markets. CBN have less and lesser inflows to actually defend the Naira on daily basis. And when you talked about the uh, issue of the the unofficial market, why is it seems like unofficial market seems to be the most sustainable or the most available or the most talked about sector or the most talked about segment of the forest market? Uh, you will recall that, yes, it controls lesser percentage of our total balance of payment settlements, but it seems like it's where you and I, uh, the lower end of demands always go to like you have the petty businessmen, the important one raw material or the other. Uh, you have those going for PTAs, uh, for traveling allowances, for medical trees, for tourism and all that. Every one of these very individuals or for school fees to let now people are now going for the parallel market for school fees. So it seems like uh, the percentage of individuals that move into the parallel market or the on black market to seek for forest uh, seems like it's dominating that of the official. That's why it continues to put a lot of pressure. And we we'll also witness some, uh, some kind of... Uh, unofficial trades from foreign embassies that should go to the official market, uh, those very uh, or receive, or those very payments they receive from their parent companies, that the parent countries where they should also move to the official market and boost our official window. But they choose to pass through the parallel market, the BDCs and the rest of them. And there are a lot of activities going on there. And with this very new regime, it has also opened up the parallel market, the BDCs. They are now going out there to source for 
dollar in the sense that they can go anywhere in the country, any transaction to attract forests and sell to Nigerians at any price because we are daily need of dollar for the manufacturers, for those who want to buy one raw material or there to complete their products, and also those who want to also bring a finished good. So this is the challenge. So it calls for self-assessment to understand what has really led to this very condition or what has led to this very uh, worsening situation of our exchange market, which like I alluded earlier, it has to do with the shortfalls in the inflows of forests from the oil theft to a lower oil production because crude oil remains the main source of our forest proceed and we also have a lot of linkages a lot of non-remittances you remember recently the central bank of nigeria raised alarm that an npc is not remitting to the federation or to remit it to the account they have with the central bank so right. how can cbm defend the naira if the npc who is the major source of our forest is not remitting so these are the challenges and we have to like i said earlier do self-assessment and find that areas where we needed to think of some of these policies or in not some laws and to what be. Um, he has said, yes. and and clearly we have constraints on the supply side of of the dollar because if we had sufficient supply, naturally these prices would not be dancing in the manner that we have seen um, back home. We saw the recent move by the the fiscal arm through the NNPC, which is the, the nation's uh, national oil company, going to what, even though they don't call it a swap deal does appear like a swap deal, which was um, to get um, uh, a facility line from the from Afri Exim Bank on the export of crude uh, to secure three billion dollars, which they hope to pump uh, into the market and in a way stabilize um, some of the fluctuation, the crazy fluctuations that we have seen um, in that sector. What other, what other, in, in your opinion, what other approach? it's available to us on the table. What else can we do? Because clearly, until we find a way to solve the constraints of the supply side, we are not moving anywhere, especially given that the, the recent publication by the CBN indicates clearly that that supply is not going to come from the central bank if you have more than 50% of your external reserve in combat, or rather, basically borrowed. Uh, you can't then be borrowing those money and and um, waging a, a war on the market where people are in turn looking for money to buy perfumes or pay for school fees and all of that uh, from the est from from the market. Um, um, first and foremost, whatever the NNPC um, has done is a temporal measure. Mm. It is not uh, uh, the responsibility of NNPC to stabilize uh, forex. But however, inter uh, government um, uh, relationship mm. can. Uh, result into the CBN approaching the NNPC on how to help it stabilize the, mm -hmm. the funds. Uh, now, when we come to, um, just like I said earlier, uh, the steps I expect the acting CBN governor to have taken is uh, first and foremost, review the existing policies. Uh, what I see in the uh, earlier policies that has uh, enabled whatever the uh, former mm -hmm. CBN governor to do whatever he has done is uh, state capture. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's one of the highest form of corruption where you uh, sponsor policies mm -hmm. to enrich some certain individuals. And mm -hmm. those policies need to be reviewed. Do you think by design that was what the policy was so supposed to achieve or was it just exploited? Uh, normally, uh, when it comes to state capture, the policy is aimed towards achieving uh, whatever uh, intention. the intention was. Mm -hmm. So um, we, I, I see that coming from um, the uh, investigator's perspective, uh, and that has enabled that abuse. And if we don't cop that abuse, uh, it, it will keep happening, and the leakage will still keep happening. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, secondly, what I feel is um, we need to stop paying lip service to the investment of uh, diversification of the economy. Now, we have opportunities and um, instances where emerging econ economies come up 
And because most of our regulatory agencies and law enforcement agencies are a bit, uh, uh, they, because they do not understand those economies, um, our policies are geared towards killing those economies, those emerging economies. And this is what uh, the president needs to set up uh, a policy direction on emerging economies. We need to come up with policies that encourages most of those businesses rather than kill them. Example of such is uh, when we, we have this deficit of uh, Forex, we, I, I, I've, I've come across companies who came up and said, uh, let's help CBN uh, in, in the form of, it might look technically like uh, money laundry, but if policies are step, stepped up to um, regulate efficiently um, by working with the major stakeholders of that emergent um, economies, it will help curb the um, alleged or intended uh, abuse of such. These companies where they partnered with companies abroad and said, you have Forex, we can get local um, um, manufacturers or business, businessmen, you help us pay the company from abroad, while um, that, that puts less pressure on the need for Forex because there's, the foreign um, company is willing um, to help you facilitate that trade for a spread. Now, they have a partner in Nigeria who is willing to get those customers. Mm -hmm. you, you, all they had to do was um, step up their KYC on um, who the customer is, then facilitate the trade by telling um, the other company abroad, pay this uh, co company in China, and then this will um, ensure that the goods come in rather than and for a spread. Mm. Now, all the CBN needs to do rather than kill that um, economy is to step up the KYC with those yeah. companies. Uh, because we, we always get the feeling that there are a lot of people who get access uh, to the greenback but have no intention of, say, for instance, doing business with it. They would rather put it back into the BDC where they can you know, get a quick uh, profit out of it. And that speculation continues to undermine the, the valuation of, of, of yeah, the round tripping and then the, the valuation of the Naira continues. But for, for, for so many experts, at the heart of the problem is the fact that Nigeria remains a consumer uh, nation, a consumer state, where this over-reliance on the dollar has become the mainstay, so much so that uh, the dollar is becoming the primary currency of the country right now that determines a variety of issues around inflation, around uh, you know, uh, keeping uh, the, the economy afloat. What are your thoughts about how we can significantly lower importation and also increase exportation where we can easily have enough dollar because the foreign reserve itself uh, is being uh, con consistently and persistently depleted over the years to, to a point where we, c we can barely have enough uh, to float the Naira as the case were. Um, first and foremost, we need to um, put in proper policies to encourage uh, local manufacturers mm. to produce goods that are uh, uh, that can meet the our con can, that can be consumed by the local mm. uh, consumers rather than um, um, the foreign products. Mm. This will help us uh, curb the, the if if the com local companies can produce vis-a-vis um, -vis mm. at par with the foreign counterparts. Mm. Uh, why would I, if I can get a, a local um, um, company to give me the same exact um, quality mm -hmm. that the foreign counterpart will give me, I would rather go for the lo what local... What do you say to people's counter-argument that, listen, it's a lot more cheaper to import goods from China, for instance, than to produce here in Nigeria. And that perhaps explains why there's this over-reliance on importation. Because as, as, a, as, 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 as a manufacturer yourself, if you realize that it's going to cost you 10,000 to produce this tablet here in Nigeria, but it's going to cost you 7,000 to import it, the smartest thing would be to, to import it instead. Uh, now, now, just like I said, policy. Mm. Now, one of the things we do not understand is the subsidy that we have uh, demonized in this part of the, the world is something that has been practiced in those parts of the world. Mm. Now, um, I, I give you an example. China, Chinese companies enjoyed 
uh, uh, subsidy on electricity um, um, subsidy to the tune of $183 billion in 2022. Now, how do you expect, and it is a deliberate policy by the Chinese government, to ensure uh, productivity. Now, how do you expect a Nigerian company that does not enjoy the same kind of subsidy in this part of the, um, the world to compete with the Chinese company? Mm. Now, the Chinese company will definitely produce at a lower uh, cost mm. than the Nigerian counterpart. Mm. All right, let mm. us bring Steve in um, at this point. Um, you've listened to some of the perspectives that have been offered um, in the studio. And um, considering the comments of JP Morgan barely 48 hours ago, where they said, um, if you net off all our commitments, uh, our excess reserve come down to just about $3.7 billion. How much of a death threat um, are we as a country, especially because the primary responsibility of ensuring price stability is that of a central bank, which in itself is gasping for breath? Honestly, it's quite, that revelation is quite threatening. And I think uh, as it stands now, those of them in the CBN and the presidency should sit up. Uh, we have a huge problem, a huge calamity, a huge threat to our national security in the sense that if we as a nation is a consuming nation, and we need dollar to consume whatever we do consume. And we have uh, a net uh, forest reserve of just about $3.7 billion. I think uh, it's quite threatening. And that cannot even last you for like two months. If you say, let's, let's go out and buy the things we need to buy and bring them in here. So that is a lot, a lot. Like I said earlier, we need uh, self-assessment at this point. Uh, like the guest inside, your studio talked about the issue of a backward integration program, import substitution program, and some level of tax incentives and some level of subsidies that require to pay in some of our key sectors to encourage local production. Uh, beyond encouraging local production, we also need to do a lot about standardization of locally made products. Uh, like he said, not that Nigerians will not want to consume Nigerian made product or locally made product, but it also comes with the quality and the standardization of this very made in Nigerian product. So there is a lot we need to do. That's why I use the word a lot of self assessments. We need to encourage ourselves and also encourage our local manufacturers to up up their standard, the quality of their product. And more importantly, the backward integration or import substitution program in areas where we have comparative advantage should be pursued aggressively. It should be pursued aggressively. Every other measures taken by this administration is self-mending, but these are the issues that are structural, they are fundamental, and you need to go after them. I know they are not short-term measures. They are middle and long-term measures, and we need it if we have to breathe in the next six months, if Nigeria still have to exist to meet up its financial obligation in respect to balance of payment. Going by what we have now on the production of crude oil down to somewhere around 1 million barrel per day, we are not even meeting the open quota of uh, 1.6 or 1.7 or the other about million barrel per day. And we're having such shortfall. And JP Morgan coming up with this revelation that uh, we are owing a lot and we have a lot of receipts that we've not been able to settle. Uh, I think it's, it, it, it calls for a lot of uh, a, a retrospection so that we can be able to understand the huge uh, challenge facing us. Right. Now, what can we do as a nation to improve in these very issues? Like I talked about, we need to also improve our electricity supply, gas to power, that we have because this consum consumption of petroleum product, the Fortnizer there, uh, the Baba Saloon, naming small businesses trying to own the generators to power their businesses is because we have on the supply of electricity. If we can supply electricity, it will definitely improve 
and reduce this very receipt of, uh, of uh, forest receipt for importation of petroleum products. And we have to, as much as possible, try to refine, if not 30, 40, 50 percent of our local for our local consumption of this very petroleum product. These are the things that is waging war. On the issue of our consumption, we need to do a lot as a nation to cut down our appetite for foreign made product. Think of it. Why will a Nigerian prefer to fly Lufthansa, fly um, uh, fly Lufthansa, fly Delta Airline, or fly British Airline when you have airpiece that can take you to the same destination. These are the ways we need to start doing this so that we can trap a lot of this dollar, a lot of this forest right here in Nigeria. I don't have problem when the money is remitted through the bureau the change or remitted through the official. We all need this forest. And what can we do to attract foreign direct investment, even if it's foreign portfolio investment? These are the remedies. And we need quickly to do things like this. And government should look away from IOU, IOU uh, debt instrument. We should do something around using our infrastructures. We have to secure facilities, both local and foreign. Certain measures that need to be taken to facilitate buying made in Niger or patronizing made in Niger. We, like you just said, in Europe you go, there are subsidies for some of these local companies that will fast track their production, which in, in the long term is good for the country because there is a lot uh, of inflow coming as, as a result of that. You made the China uh, reference just moments ago. Do you see any move within the policy uh, formation of the government, whether now or in time past, where we're trying to protect our local companies, for instance, to stay afloat and to be able to operate at a much higher capacity that can help us uh, correct uh, some of these issues. And what are your thoughts about the recent uh, access that um, the NMPCL got from a Frexin Bank of $3 billion uh, to, to also help mitigate this already bad situation that we're discussing today? Um, like I said earlier, whatever the NNPC um, have gotten from the um, Nexon Bank as a temporal measure, uh, we need to look at the, longer, uh, the bigger picture. How do we um, ensure that there's liquidity of dollar in, in the economy? And um, just like my colleague earlier said, he said um, most of those things are uh, as a result of inefficiencies in the, and, and, and laws mm. that are not being passed, uh, are, not, are not put in place to ensure that we cope um, this kind of menace. Mm. For example, I give you is most of the people will rather consume a foreign product mm. uh, and will blame them. I don't. Mm. Uh, for the fact that I, I understand, um, let me break it down to mm. the layman's mm. understanding. We have the toothpaste. Mm. And most of our toothpaste, it contains triclonide. Mm. Triclonide in other parts of the world is a banned substance. Mm. Uh, but while we have it in, in, in most of our, uh, our toothpaste, and that is why be, for people who are learned enough to understand mm. the things, they would rather consume the foreign toothpaste than the local toothpaste. Uh, the tri triclonide is, is, cancer is cancerous. Mm. Uh, I'll leave that to the expert. <laughs> right. Now, the government also needs to uh, build Very infrastructures. Yeah. Yeah. They need to build infrastructures. They need to um, uh, attract foreign direct investment. They okay. need to... Yeah. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Davis, we have run out of time, and I dare say that uh, this is a conversation that needs uh, a, a second part, or uh, if if not more more serious, where we can unpack some of these developments to try to make sense of what's happening as the government continues to uh, come up with these policies. But we'd like to thank you most kindly uh, you for sparing much. your time and for joining us on the program for adding value to the conversation. I appreciate you so much uh, for for making the time. Idris Mohammed Abdullahi is a financial expert, expert on corporate governance anti-corruption, tax fraud, and asset recovery. Also joining us this morning via Zoom is uh, Steve Mwachuku, who is an economist and a financial expert. Mr. Steve, uh, fortunately, we couldn't get you into the studio, but we did get your thoughts and your invaluable contribution via Zoom. So thank you most kindly for joining us on Daybreak. And that is uh, it for the conversation uh, this morning. We take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment with more on the show. Join us again. <music>